your plant's making tinkle. <laughs> what? Oh, no! Oh. Give me that. Oh. <laughs> Good afternoon. This is Julie Kaniski, and I'm about to record the exciting life history of my oldest living ancestor, my grandfather, Stanley Kaniski. I'm ready now, Grandpa. Wake up. I'm not sleeping. Then why are your eyes closed? I just don't want the world to see too much of me. <laughs> uh, give me that. <clears throat> My name is Stanley Kaniski. I was born in Warsaw. You could say I am the first Polish joke. <laughs> we were farmers, and my parents had six cows, three pigs, and my two sisters. Does anybody know where Nell keeps the floor wax? I couldn't find any vacuum cleaner bags either. Look, why don't we just wait until Nell gets home and let her do everything? Sweetie, we can't ask Nell to do anything today. She went to a funeral. A funeral? Was it for me? <laughs> no, Stanley. Nell's cousin passed away. Oh, I hope it wasn't anything serious. <laughs> no, they just buried her for a joke. <laughs> oh, you do make a mess here, Katie. Oh. Well. Oh, hmm. Grandma. <laughs> That's delicious. <laughs> What's in it? I think it's fertilizer. <laughs> fertilizer. <laughs> Come on, Katie. I'll show you how to wring out a mop. <laughs> okay, Grandpa. I want you to tell me all about how you met Grandma and just keep talking. Give me all the details. Okay, but I reserve the right to leave out the kinky stuff. <laughs> oh, Samantha. How was the ball game? It was canceled on account of the fight. Oh, the kids got in a fight. No, the fathers did. <laughs> what were they fighting about? Whether or not the umpire's the son of a female dog. <laughs> Julie, what are you doing? Oh, it's my school report. Roots of the Kaniski clan. I didn't know white people had roots. <laughs> sure they do. They just can't slam dunk with a dam. <laughs> Go ahead, Grandpa. Well, the first time I ever met Mildred was at a Polish picnic in West Covina. <laughs> we had a wonderful time singing, dancing, bobbing for sausage. <laughs> and then we went our separate ways, and I never saw her again. Grandpa, you married her. Oh, married? Oh, yeah, I almost forgot that. <laughs> Hello, Samantha. I'm Officer Simpson. Um, I'm afraid you missed my dad. He's at the station house catching up on some paperwork. No, he isn't. See, we had a little problem. Simpson, is something wrong? Now, I don't want you to get upset when I tell you this. Simpson, what happened? See, you're getting shook up already. <laughs> Simpson, tell me what happened. Your father's been shot. Oh, no. But by a very small bullet. <laughs> Wait a minute! Stop. No. Stop. He's coming in now. Now, just act natural 
pretend nothing happened, huh? Everything's under control, Chief. I broke it to them gently. Dad, what happened? You got a shot? Okay? Dad, okay? Dad, who got shot you? you? Dad? Dad? Dad, what happened? This idiot shot me. <laughs> oh, sure, blame me. Just because I happened to be holding the gun. And there happened to be a bullet in the chamber. And I happened to pull the trigger. Daddy, are you all right? Yeah, it's just a flesh wound. Let me see. Yeah! I wasn't even in the room when it happened. <laughs> the bullet went through my wall into his office. What the hell were you doing firing off your gun in a police station for? Well, I told you, Chief. I was just showing one of the rookies my secret quick draw. <laughs> the trick is... I never pull the gun out of the holster. I just... <laughs> Don't shoot! Take my watch, take my money, take my teeth! <laughs> I hope this isn't going to hurt my chances for promotion. Look, just get back to the station house and fill out the discharge weapons report. Every bullet has to be accounted for, remember? Oh, yeah. And Simpson, for your own good, I keep a lid on this. You could depend on me. I know how to keep things quiet. Goodbye. Goodbye, Chief. Oh, uh, Chief, thanks again for not shooting back, huh? <laughs> There goes a man who gives a whole new meaning to the word jackass. Look, Dad, just relax. I'll fix you a bowl of chili you'll never forget. Uh-oh. I better go help her make the chili. The last time it took me an hour to get it out of the toaster. That's it. My goldfish is gone. I'm sorry, honey. I just couldn't pull her through. I tried everything, even mouth to mouth. <laughs> Dad, what were you doing when you got shot? I was reading some of Simpson's reports and I was scratching my head trying to figure them out. And suddenly, bang! He missed your head by an inch. Daddy, will you hold me, please? You almost got killed today. Well, I didn't. It's all right. It's over. I'm fine. Dad, aren't you afraid of croaking? <laughs> Come on. Did you ever know your father to be afraid of anything? I remember the time there was a snake in our backyard. I mean anything with feet. <laughs> Come on, honey. It's it's just I just got nicked in the hand. There's nothing serious happened. I'm okay. I'll probably live forever. Bet that's what mom thought. But she died, and look how young she was. God took your mother because he always picks the prettiest flowers. You mean if she were ugly, she'd still be alive? <laughs> well, let me put it another way. When God's looking for angels, he chooses the good people first. Leaves the bad ones here. But yeah, that's right. No wonder the world's going to hell. <laughs> Carl! Carl, you, you all right? I'm fine. Oh, good. You know, you're the only brother I got. I was afraid for a minute to hear that I had another customer for my mortuary. <laughs> How come you found out so fast? My contact down at the station house. You mean that somebody in my department tips you off? Yeah. He gives me hot tips and cold stiffs. <laughs> Uncle Ed, Daddy almost got shot in the head. Well, at least it wasn't a vital organ. <laughs> hey, Carl, I, I just stopped over to see if you were all right. And you are. So, uh, I gotta go. Yeah, goodbye. I got a stiff waiting in the hearse. <laughs> <laughs> 
You left them out there all alone? He ain't gonna go anywhere. <laughs> I got the keys. <laughs> really did. Well, when I told him how much I was going to charge for his funeral, he never batted an eye. Yeah, but how do you know dead people can't hear or know what's going on around them? Come on with me, Sam. Where are you taking me? Out to the hearse. You can yell in his ear, pinch him, see if he moves. Come on. No! No more dead people! <laughs> God, this is Samantha. I'm sorry to bother you on a Saturday. I know you're busy with your Jewish friends. <laughs> this can't wait till tomorrow. See, I'm all confused how you're running things up there. It might not be your fault. It could be one of your assistant angels screwing things up. <laughs> you know, one whose harp is missing a few strings. <laughs> it's just not fair the way you let people die. You already took my mom. Today, you almost took my dad. I don't know who's gonna be next. I'm scared. What are you doing? Talking to my vet? Dad, why does Uncle Ed act like that? You came this close to being dead. Close only counts in horseshoes. Uncle Ed thinks dying's a big joke. Uncle Ed's full of horseshoes. <laughs> Come on, let's stop talking about this death stuff, huh? Let's see how the Lakers did today. And sometime tomorrow, President and Mrs. Reagan will be returning from their month-long working vacation in Tahiti. <laughs> on the local scene, here's an update on Glenn Long's story of the hour, the terrorist attempt to assassinate our chief of police, Carl Kaniski. Did he say assassinate? I think so. Our man in the field, Hamilton Storm, is standing by with a live minicam report. Waiting with him as a source high up in the police department. Come in, Ham. Hi there. This is your man in the field, Hamilton Storm. And with me is Officer... What is your name, sir? Could you repeat the question? Your name. What is your name, sir? Ralph Simpson. Fine. As I understand it, uh, Chief Kaniski was able to block the would-be assassin's bullet with his own hand. That's right. He was returning my salute. <laughs> I actually saved his life. <laughs> Idiot. I'm gonna have his brain taken out and fingerprinted. Now, Officer Simpson, what do you think this is? Terrorism? Bizarre cult killers? Or some sex scandal? <laughs> well, there you have it. Now back to our studio for Bambi Collins and her exclusive close-up, Wife Swapping, How to Come Out Ahead. You want to learn about death? Where did you see what I do to Simpson? <laughs> No, Squirt, I'm making a salad. But I can't find where Nell keeps the salad bowl. Katie, can I ask you something? Sure. I'll make it fast. I've got to start getting ready for my date tonight. Did you ever think about dying? Yeah, once in a while. What a relief. I thought I was the only one in this family who cared about dying. At your age? Sam, forget it. Look, if you dye your hair, Dad'll throw a fit. <laughs> Look, 
Do me a favor, huh? Whatever you do, keep your television tuned to Sesame Street for the next couple of days, huh? It's too late. Dad already saw the news. Oh, oh. Simpson, can I ask you something? Yeah. What? Do you ever think about dying? I am right this very minute. Are you scared? Not of dying. Just hurting. See, I believe in reincarnation. That's where after you die, you come back as somebody else. Do you know who you're going to be? Tom Selleck. <laughs> People think we look a lot alike. Simpson. What the hell is all this crap? Assassinated by terrorists. You were? <laughs> You mean the news report? I don't know how the media get hold of these stories. I saw you telling them on the TV news. Well, that's one way. <laughs> Samantha, would you mind leaving us alone for a little? Simpson and I are going to have a man to moron talk. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with her. You're going to stay right here. Yeah. I was afraid you were going to say that. <laughs> Grandma and great grandpa moved into West Covina in 1849. Julie, can I ask you about something? Uh, sure, Squirt. What about? About dying. I gotta tell you, Samantha, that's not my favorite topic of conversation. It's bad enough Uncle Ed runs a mortuary. Well, it's a living. You'd be surprised what you could pick up in spare change alone. <laughs> but, Julie. I'm scared. I don't know what's gonna happen to me after I die. Do you believe in reincarnation? You gotta be kidding. When you go, you go. That's it. They bury you while people weep in a hole that's six feet deep. The worms crawl in, the worms crawl out, the worms play pinochle on your snout. <laughs> And then you turn an icky green and your guts come out like sour cream. <laughs> Julie, you stink! Well, first, I dug the bullet out of the wall behind your desk. And then I tried to squeeze it back in its shell so nobody would know it had been fired. Simpson, you're the perfect argument for gun control. <laughs> and birth control. <laughs> Thank you. Never mind him. Go on. Well, then, I covered the hole by hanging a picture over it. I figured that way nobody would know anything. Except the on-the-spot news team. I never called them. They were just following the fire trucks. Fire trucks? What were you trying to do, burn the evidence? I never thought of that. I was just hammering a nail to hang the picture to cover the hole. But somehow I must have shorted out the wires to the fire alarm. You'll be happy to know that our sprinkler system works like a charm. <laughs> and more good news, they're pumping out your desk right now. What about the terrorists? I don't think they have desks. <laughs> Channel 6, get hold of that gun story. Well, when the news reporter was there, he spotted the bullet hole in your office. And then one cover-up led to another. Now I know how Nixon felt. <laughs> Chief, please accept my resignation. <laughs> I'm sorry to get your good hand. It used to be. <laughs> now I gotta call the mayor and explain all this. Carl, if I was you, I'd transfer Simpson to the bomb squad. He'd only blow himself up. You catch on quick, don't you?
Is this seat taken? No. What you doing, watching the world go by? I was watching an ant struggling with a crumb. Oh, can I watch too? But it was too late, you just squashed him. Oh. I wonder if he knows that he's dead. Oh, Samantha, it's just an ant. Yeah, but he probably had a family. And baby ants who were waiting for him to bring home that crumb. And now they'll never see him again. They won't have anyone to take care of them. Well, maybe their mother will. What if their mother's dead like mine? Yeah, I know how you feel. I, I still miss my mother a little. Don't worry, Grandpa. You'll be able to see her again soon. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't rush me. Aren't you afraid of dying? No. On the other hand, I'm in no great hurry. Like they say, dying can ruin your whole day. It's just not fair that people have to die. Samantha, you gotta think of life like a, like a sack of jelly beans. You know, when you get to the last few, you start eating them slower. You, you enjoy every little bit of flavor. You want to make them last as long as possible. I know what you mean. And there's just one bean left that can make it last forever. Oh, but if you're smart, if you're smart, you can make them all last. Yeah, just take every moment nice and slow and enjoy all the flavor in every single bean. So, if I make every second of my life count, I won't have time to worry about dying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Grandpa, I love you. I hope you've got a lot of beans left. Well, according to your grandma, I'm just full of beans. <laughs> Bill? Hi, honey. I missed you so much. Oh, I missed you too. <laughs> How's the funeral? Well, about as good as funerals go, I guess. Come sit down. Okay. Oh, okay. You know what? I still just can't believe that Georgina's gone. And we had so many laughs together. I know what you mean. You do? Yeah. And you will, too, as soon as you get older. <laughs> What are you talking about? See, you're just gonna have to come to realize that life's like a big bag of jelly beans. Uh-huh. You've been listening to Ronald Reagan again, huh? <laughs> come on, what went wrong while I was gone? Nothing. That's good. Except Dad got shot. Hmm? Only don't worry, it wasn't the terrorist. He's fine. And Gertrude bought the farm. She was blown out of the water. In the prime of her life. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. Chief, I'm sorry. 